I was I was at McGill University. I was um, I was in uh, mathematics to start, and then I switched to commerce. And I think my second year, uh, I was always in gym since I'm 14, 15, and I was doing I was sort of doing traditional martial arts at one place, kickboxing in another place, or kickboxing, boxing, and uh, weights at a, at a third gym. I thought, this is ridiculous. There should be one gym where we could do everything. I think it was 1989 or 90, uh, myself and two, two partners started talking about putting a, a gym together that had everything under one roof. So almost like a martial arts center. And at the time in 1991, I think it was March of 91, we opened TriStar not far from here uh, on a street called Jean Talon. And we had about six, 7,000 square feet, and we had it sort of divvied up. There was a center area for boxing, which had the ring, the bags, and we had a floor area, a tatami for traditional martial arts. And then we had about 1,500 square feet of weight equipment, treadmills, all that. And that's when it started. Yeah, I remember first walking into the gym. It was a very intimidating place. The gym was smaller. And uh, when you'd walk in, there was a lot of kickboxing. You know, kickboxing was very popular uh, before the jiu-jitsu boom. Even after the jiu-jitsu boom, kickboxing was huge. Muay Thai was huge. And we were the first grapplers coming in. You know, we were the first guys, hey, there's grappling at TriStar. We want to learn grappling. Can we sign up for grappling? We were those first groups. I was really at the beginning and as the jiu-jitsu program was growing. So we were a bit like uh, the oddballs. You know, when I first talked to people about the idea of having everything under one roof, sort of having different martial arts, sort of the common thing that everybody said was that's impossible. That's not going to work because, you know, karate instructors, taekwondo instructor, they're going to talk bad about each other. There's going to be a lot of ego involved. It's going to be difficult to manage. The fight world was actually very known, but it was a closed circuit. So guys that came out of Kyokushin, Budo Karate, guys that came out of kickboxing, guys that came out of Muay Thai, guys that came out of Jiu Jitsu, we all kind of knew each other because we were like the outcasts that the, that the average person didn't know about our lifestyle yet. Uh, you know, they looked at us as being aggressive and you know, but at the end of the day, well, actually, you know, like people started to understand that we're martial artists not barbarians, we're martial artists. Keep your hands up, chin tucked in at all times. My name is Master Peter. Hui and double, double, hui. So I've been here in 1991 since the, since the Thai start open. I teach all the people Muay Thai. I teach the whole, whole striking class, like a Muay Thai class. I give my knowledge to Canada. TriStar had a, had a good atmosphere because as we were doing our grappling stuff and the kickboxing class was going on, the kickboxers would be like, hey, do you guys want to spar? And we're like, okay, spar grappler versus striker? Yeah, let's do it for fun. You could have a boxer training with a Muay Thai guy. So you had more variety of, of opponents and, and, and partners to train with. So that was good for us. So we'd glove up with, MMA, uh, with boxing gloves and we would take them down and wrestle. So it was just such a great place for MMA because you had grapplers and kickboxers really with a good atmosphere messing around with each other. And I had, I had done zero kickboxing at that point. I just had a handful of jiu-jitsu classes. So, of course, it was very natural for us to train kickboxing. And it just, the medley just was, was beautiful. And then about, uh, I can't remember when, we are talking 15 plus years ago, the MMA started to, to come in. We were doing some underground MMA fights and stuff like that. And I competed in that as well. I won the lightweight Canadian championship. I won the absolute Canadian championship. But again, I was never thinking of going pro. The guys who were going pro in TriStar, the first few guys, you know, they were really, really uh, considered extreme. Why? Because they were getting paid, I don't know, 800 bucks, maximum 1,000 bucks. I'm talking about early, early on. And they were doing something extremely dangerous and they were preparing for months for it. And it was so unknown. You know, we were doing it on the Native Reserve where it's illegal because fighting was illegal. When TriStar had an MMA program, actual MMA competition was illegal. They would have to go on the reserve and we go to these shows and it was just like, you know, these young kids were like, what are, you, what are they getting into? You know, don't they, don't they want to go to school? These guys would drop out of school, train all day and, and fight. And it was just, for me, it was too extreme, too much of a risk. And I preferred doing it for fun and learning to defend myself. So what happened was the guys from TriStar just started winning. We just had a great program. We had Angelo Exaharakos. He was a purple belt under uh, Henzo Gracie. So we actually had a real jiu-jitsu purple belt in Montreal. Now, I know purple belts, you see them everywhere nowadays, but back in the day, having a purple belt as a trainer was huge. Angelo would go every weekend to New York, six hours away from Montreal. He would train with the Gracies, come back and teach us twice a week. He would come here and teach twice a week. So we were getting all the real 
authentic technique. So we had, we, had, we started to develop our reputation. When TriStar would go to a fight, we, our, our tournament would clean house right away. Angelo started getting extremely busy where he couldn't, couldn't really come here regularly. And I remember for us starting to take over a lot of the coaching responsibilities and was very good at it. And so a lot of the guys at that time fighting, uh, Ivan Menjabar being one of them as an example, uh, started to look to, to him as a coach and he started to take on that responsibility more and more. And then I guess within a few years he was pretty much the guy for coaching here at TriStar. Ferraz always been uh, in the group. Obviously, he, he's amazingly skilled. He could have fight if he wanted to. I believe he would have been a, a world-class uh, fighter. But Ferraz always has something that nobody had in the, in the group. He always been more, uh, more intellectual than every one of us. He always been more uh, prone to detail. Every, he, he's very, very smart academically. He's got a background in, in philosophy and he's very educated. So every time we needed advice, technical advice, we go to Ferraz. I believe he think he probably serves people better as, as teaching them. And he, he's just, that's, that's one of his main strengths. He's, he's very smart and uh, very good at teaching. In Montreal early on we had a promotion called TKO and if you look at that promotion it was a very key promotion. Uh, it was headed by Stéphane Patry to develop MMA in Montreal in Quebec. Why? Because so many UFC fighters came out of that promotion. We were, we were cultivating our skills to compete in that show. right? So it gave us an excuse to, to, we had a date, we had a book date. You have a fight in three months. Well guess what, you're going to train overtime. You want to shine on that night. It just gave us a great platform to, for us to compete and, and, and show off our skills and a great motivation for us to to believe we can go up to the next level. And TKO did something really special. What they did is, when a Quebecois fighter was doing really, really well, they would go get an American fighter. And David Loiseau was the first uh, fighter to take on an American fighter. So you have a small gym. The gym was half this size, you know, way less members, way less people doing MMA. And we were just a handful of guys training every day. And one day, uh, after Dave won a series of bouts, he was matched up with someone called Jesse Jones. Jesse Jones was the world champion in TKO and it was a Quebecois fighter versus an American fighter and on our minds that was huge you know America is so it's so big it's so strong so powerful so many great boxers wrestlers martial artists and from the military cap no no less you know so this, a, a brand name of MMA so we were taking on a giant here and it was uh, the first time one of our fighters took on an American four world title as well and uh, it was just a spectacular fight <laughs> David Loiseau became world champion that night and beat an American fighter from the Militich crew, a brand name. So TriStar really had broken through that night and uh, people started to recognize us more in Montreal, know who we are and, and uh, the gym started getting a lot more popular after that. Mm -hmm. 